I'm Chelsea Airy and I'm an Environmental Education Program Coordinator for Wake County Solid Waste and Recycling. Hi, I'm Amanda Astor and I'm a Communications Analyst for the City of Raleigh's Solid Waste Services Department. Let's talk recycling, a topic near and dear to both of our hearts. That's a great idea. So I think so many of our residents are really excited about recycling and it's so easy for us to throw our stuff in our cart and never really think about it again. But the truth is, is that our recycling really does go on a long journey. Exactly. There's a whole complex life for our recyclables once they leave our house. There's tons of people, machinery, and technology to help sort. It really is fascinating. So one of the places that our recycling can go in Wake County is Sunoco Recycling. And over the years, we have taken so many tours and talked with hundreds of people there. And even though we can't go there today in person, we're going to take a virtual tour and see where our recycling goes when it leaves the curb. The first thing that happens when a recycling truck pulls into the facility is the weigh-in. The truck is weighed to check the tonnage of recycling it carries. Then, the truck backs in a large open space with large garage doors. The area where the recycling is emptied from the trucks is called the tip floor. This is a huge mountain of mixed recyclables. The amount of recycling brought to the facility varies depending on the time of year. For example, volume definitely increases around the holiday season. You can imagine all of the extra cardboard from packaging and presents. Sunoco processes 500 to 600 tons per day on average. Recyclables are pushed onto a conveyor belt by a front end loader. Then it all gets swirled around a large metering drum. Everything is pretty smashed together when it arrives and the drum unsticks the pieces from each other. Everything then goes through a pre-sort, which is done by employees at the facility. Many employees stand beside the conveyor belt and attempt to grab and pull off anything harmful to the people working there or the machines. These dangers include sharp objects like needles, anything too large like bed frames or scrap metal, and items that we call tanglers, like garden hoses, plastic bags, and Christmas lights that may clog up the machinery. These items should never be put in the recycle bin. We all need to do our part to help protect the people who sort our recyclables and the machinery they manage. Once the pre-sort is done, we move on to separating materials. Glass is first. All the material will pass through a glass breaker. The machine shakes the material and the glass breaks into small pieces that fall through a metal grate onto another conveyor belt. Then it's outside to a bunker. Cardboard is separated by what's known as an OCC screen. OCC stands for Old Corrugated Cardboard. This machine is looking for large pieces of cardboard only, not small boxes like cereal and frozen food boxes. Next is the removal of different types of paper. The paper sorter has star-shaped rubber wheels that turn upwards and act as a sticky lint roller. Anything two-dimensional bounces on those rubber wheels. Containers fall down and continue down the conveyor belt to be sorted in the correct location. Plastic is then taken off the conveyor belt. An optical sorter is used to separate plastics by type. It uses infrared lasers and jets of air to scan the density of the plastic. The optical sorter at Sunoco is designed to find plastic bottles such as those used for water, salad dressing, and hand soap. Other types of plastic are hand sorted. Employees pick off other types of plastics and throw them into bunkers. Removing metals is the final sorting step. Steel cans are removed first by a high-powered magnet passing quickly over the conveyor belt. The steel cans are picked up and then immediately dropped into a bunker. Aluminum cans are not attracted to the magnet and are sorted by an eddy current. Once separated, materials go into a baler where they are made into stackable cubes. Each weighs between 750 and 1,200 pounds. Finally, the bales are sold to various markets and vendors. The material that makes up the bales will become new items. There are so many possibilities for your recyclables. For instance, plastic can become new bottles or clothing, aluminum cans can become car parts, glass can become new glass bottles and jars, and paper and cardboard can become new boxes and paper. So much gets thrown away as trash that can be put to new use. Let's all be mindful of what we're throwing away. So instead of taking up room in the landfill, your recyclables are reused and repurposed. There you have it. It's easy to toss something in the bin and forget about it, but your recyclables have a long journey from the curb to be ready to be useful again. It involves a lot of people, technology, and machinery. Thanks for coming along with us for the tour, and thanks for remembering we all have an important role to play before we toss recyclables in the blue bin. Wow, that really is amazing. I never get tired of seeing that. Yes, and it's such a good reminder to not contaminate. Please keep styrofoam, plastic bags, tanglers like garden hoses, string lights, and rope, as well as ceramic glass out of the cart. 
So again, keep out those plastic bags, make sure to not put in any food waste, and make sure to put your recyclables in loose, never bagged. And another helpful tip when you're recycling, please keep your lids and caps on items. It's much easier to recycle them together. So hopefully you have enjoyed today's virtual tour as much as we have. And remember, there are real people at Sunoco hand sorting part of these items. So we really have to keep anything dangerous out of our bin. We all have to do our part. So remember to recycle right, recycle more, and recycle often. Thank you.